And I, I've mentioned uh, some of this around sponsorship and formal training. I think, uh, and what I mentioned before about having a family around you is normal. And rather than, um, I guess, give points, I just wanna actually tell a story. So uh, when I first started coaching, um, I coached because I didn't have kids. I transitioned straight from um, uh, being an athlete into that coaching environment um, and coaching uh, rep teams in the ACT Academy of Sport. When I had children, I used to bring my kids to training. And um, I don't know if, if potentially Chloe remembers, but I used to have Rachel sitting on my hip whilst I was coaching um, uh, training sessions in particular. Uh, when we had games, my husband would uh, sit in the stands with the kids as well. Um, when I went to nationals, uh, I would uh, either take a nanny with me um, or my husband would come along and we would uh, pay for extra accommodation where him and the kids uh, would stay during that tournament. Um, and the reason that is because when you coach, it doesn't matter what level of, of um, what level you are coaching at, there is always in the back of your in the back of your mind, am I good enough? Am I doing a good job? What have I missed? Why can't my kids? Um, why why aren't they performing? And so you get in yourself this this level of doubt and anxiety. And having my children there actually reduced my anxiety. I was able to then think, um, you know, just reflect on, okay, so we might have lost that game by 20. Um, I see my kids play. Um, it just sort of anchors you, it centres you. Um, and I think it, it enabled me to be a better coach. The downside to that is that the view of having your kids at a nationals or at a training um, or at a game um, at that time, um, and we're talking, well, my daughter's, what, the, my kids are 26 and 24, wasn't viewed in a positive light. So when I actually applied for another representative gig, I was told that I'd been unsuccessful because people had complained because my children had attended the nationals. And so what that told me was that they didn't understand what that family environment provided me in terms of reducing my anxiety and making me a better coach, but that I had to fit a, um, I guess, a predetermined look of what a coach at that level should look like, and, and I didn't fit in. So I left that and then just started coaching in a club environment where I felt more comfortable. So to your question, um, you know, what can females do? Um, uh, what can female coaches do, um, sorry, uh, to help advocate, speak up um, and ask. Take the narrative, use the advantages you have where I spoke about your emotional intelligence and your communication and make what you want to be normal in your environment actually be normal because that is how we develop a community of practice. If at the end of the day, we actually don't have to have webinars like this, where we're talking about female ret retention and participation, how bloody awesome would that be? If we no longer had to pump money into women in sports programs, how amazing would that be? So um, whilst I, I do love talking about this and I'm really passionate about it, I'm looking forward to the day where I actually don't have to talk about it anymore. Thank you for that, Chris. Martha, was there anything to add on that? Yeah, I just wanted to echo that and say, you know, we, we I would love to get to the stage where we're not even talking about women's sport or girls' sport or female sport. It's just sport. Um, and I think that's, you know, we do need to bridge the gap, but that's where we're all headed. And just, I know Chris, I think, mentioned this quote very quickly, but I just want to hire, you know, to, to focus on what Chris just said then. You can be what you can see. And we just need more females visible at every level. Um, and I think that will just make a huge, huge difference. I, I completely support what your examples there, Chris. Thank you. 
Um, we do have a, um, uh, a lady by the name, oh gosh, her name's Fraggle. Uh, what's her real name? Karen Owens, sorry. So she's started up a Facebook group. It's called Hear Us Raw. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that a, a number of people on this webinar are actually members of that group. And that's just an opportunity for us to build that community of practice where we can actually share positive stories and actually check and challenge. So I'd encourage you to, um, to reach out to Fraggle um, and to join that, uh, that Facebook group. It, it's not there to, um, to bag or to say, you know, this is all wrong. This is really about empowerment. This is about advocating and speaking up. Uh, so if, if you know of any other groups that, um, that you have at your, your, in your local community, then, then please share those links. And I'll also include, Jared, on my um, presentation some amazing podcasts that I listen to as well, as well as I subscribe to some newsletters um, so that you can have so many resources, you find the way that works best for you as a coach to get information about this area. For me, it's podcasts. I'm always listening to one and there are some fabulous podcasts around um, women and girls in sport. Martha, was there a PowerPoint slide you wanted me to show with those resources? Uh, I No, I will send you that tomorrow. I will send you that tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll pull together quite a few, actually, so that coaches can find what's the best option for them. And it might be a, a newsletter that they want to subscribe to or a Facebook group or an Instagram group. There are so many options, so I'll, I'll pull them together tomorrow and send them through.